Hi everyone. Today we have a special guest, Sel Selma Berry. Uh, she is into teaching field for the last 25 years and now she is helping kids and uh, women basically through the art therapy. Let's hear more from her and uh, welcome uh, Selma Berry ma'am. Uh, it's really a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you for that warm welcome. And yes, I, my background is of a art teacher and ever since COVID, I realized that not only stress has been a great factor and that is why I felt that art therapy where we have, I can use uh, knitting, tatting, uh, crochet, uh, embroidery to help women and children overcome stress. That, that's the main reason I felt that could help a lot of people uh, like to keep themselves occupied because working with the hands is the best occupational therapy that one can do. And using art as a therapy can help a lot of people and a lot of women to overcome stress. That's how uh, du during the COVID, I realized that was it was so much. If you, if you notice around you, older women who did knitting are much calmer. They're good listeners. There's a lot of uh, serene. And, but when we are not working with the hands, we are only depending. Uh, we are not uh, fully occupied. We realize that things go into this other fields which are not helpful. That's true. So, and, uh, Amazing, ma'am. Uh, because um, I know during the childhood, I used to sit along with my grandmother and uh, learn that knitting and the crochet. I really loved the dolls and the sweaters she used to make for us. Um, and uh, if I may ask you, uh, when have you started learning this and uh, how many people have you trained after uh, realizing? I've, ever since childhood, I have been learning because I'm influenced by Air Force officers, uh, wives and that. And all of them nearby used to do some form of an art. So I picked up a lot, drawn thread and this and that. And I learned that it was so useful. And then I got into learning certificate uh, through, uh, through Madra codes. And that's where I could really give uh, my passion and my what I loved, a uh, full-fledged importance and do a lot more. And, and as I worked with people who came to my class, I realized starting was something which brings out all uh, bottled up feelings and emotions that normally you feel the person is okay, but uh, when they start working on it and they get good sleep, then you realize what the family has been thinking, the person has been sleeping. In fact, the person had uh, was not sleeping well. And then we are able to know that what was troubling them and we are able to speak out. And in that way, I also did my certificate counseling to help. And I realized there are a lot we could reach out to, not just kids and women. And, and also could learn the listening skill, right? That is where I went into, I did my soft skills and uh, another thing called uh, soft skills and personality. And that's where I learned that there's so much more which, uh, to learn each day for each one of us, not just craft or anything. And and there's a lot to grow in personality development, lots and lots to grow. And helping one or two, I could give the right guidance to people who are they need expert advice mm -hmm. on things. My cousin, my sister-in-law's sister, when she was was whether to continue our studies or no, and but because of a health factor, we were able to give the right guidance and she could complete her degree. That was a great achievement by itself. Mm. Although since, because when she was born, there was a there was fluid in her brain and all those problems were there. But she learned uh, due to surgery that was entire and to help all that to overcome, I could give the right guidance what to do. So uh, it's a blessing once we learn, we are able to give the people the right guidance instead of misleading them and uh, having, uh, you know, uh, most of the women, when they get together, what if it is like that case? What is the, like this case? When we compare and give our own solution, it adds up to a lot of 
stress. Instead of that being the right guidance and being well aware is much more important. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because if if we if we just focus on whatever problem we have and if we do not uh, look at some other aspects where we can actually distract ourselves and um, uh, I think we get into that loop of thinking more about it and enter into more of negativity and uh, in fact we manifest more of those things yeah that's true that at least some kind of art form will actually actually help reduce those stress levels and calm us down and um, you were the career coach right before and how how has the transformation been for you for me, as an art teacher, I realized ninth standard students are finding it tough to select the ninth, uh, sixth subjects. And that is where when that at that time, my son was in ninth and he had to select his subjects. And that's where I felt this was a difficult choice to make. You need expert guidance to plan this out. It's not just for one year. It is long-term planning that is required. People get into jobs just like they finish degree and get into a job, not knowing they stay in the job lifelong. It is when you find your, uh, when you go into marriage, you take so many things, into, but when you get into a job and you're going to stick to it, you're not giving it so much importance. And this is where career counseling plays a role on handholding and guiding you and giving the right guidance, which goes to take what, what to take based on sort and everything. Yeah. So many other things are there to consider and normally people just want a degree and get into a government job or something like that but behind that is the, uh, the essence that we need to keep uh, work on personality development we need to upgrade our skills we need to do a lot more to, uh, even if you're not, we are working we need to keep reading books and getting into all those habits so that's where career counseling can really help give them a proper guidance. True, true. Thank you. And um, how, how like, during the COVID time, I think you have uh, exited from that and the teaching. Yes. And how has this uh, period been for you? Because um, arts, and especially when we talk about this, Many people, uh, I'm not sure how, you know, uh, they would be coming, reaching out to you and what was the process that you followed so that uh, many of the people who would like to start, uh, you know, a digital uh, platform for themselves where they can teach some yeah. or any kind of art form, it yeah. helps them. Very interesting question because most of them get stuck once you leave your job and sit at home, you are wondering what to do next. And here I got into learning about YouTube, Facebook domination, and mm -hmm. uh, the internet, online world. They're so huge. The social media itself is so huge. And there's so much to learn at the same time, uh, to come out of the comfort zone, work on ourselves, and get over our fears. And when I joined ILH, it was, not, it was just for online skills, but I never knew the potential and the vastness it holds. It is not like uh, like you get uh, you are able to achieve anything like magic, but you need to work and plan and organize and do all of this. So when I got into YouTube also, I was doubtful because I opened my YouTube long back, but never focused on about the description, the title, and mm -hmm. or making the banner. So all that I learned in the process and sitting at home, I also learned that when COVID hit kindergarten, children hit the most. Their writing skills went to a back seat. Their art to a back seat. So now on YouTube, on my channel, I do teach them kindergarten art lessons. And there's been a good response. So what I realize is there are certain things where we can help them through the social media to get, a, get involved and I, I'm doing it for kindergarten kids, but I noticed that their uh, age group of 24 to, uh, to 34 are all involved watching the videos because they too want to learn how to teach the kids. Parents are there you know, who want to learn something and keep the kids occupied. They know the dangers of the mobile and the radiation. 
So obviously this is one way where I felt, okay, I'm doing something and that is useful. Yeah. And uh, because not only, and it gets us to know that we know so much, which uh, by sharing, we're able to uh, bring a smile to somebody's face. When I started teaching my nephew's children, both twins, they used to enjoy COVID. They had no school and things like that. And because being twins, one is a boy, one is a girl. The boy used to hardly sit. But then he sa I saw the change that can take place in a person where they sit down, he's able to constantly learn healthy competition. Hmm. That yeah. thing itself was so heart opening for me that I said, okay, like I can do that, but I can teach it online. And I can see the all the three main active students who have been with me. I've seen the difference in them. Amazing, amazing. Because uh, now at least um thankful to the social media and the online platforms where we can share our knowledge or our whatever we practice. And I think uh, this helps so many people. And also I think uh, the way you have helped the kids in your home and also the people around. Uh, through the trans uh, career transformation and also this one i think it had uh it definitely creates a lot lot benefits uh, in people's life because uh, the kids we see that they are so much addicted to screens these days and uh, it's a very good yes. uh, activity it for them yeah it's a concern for parents and uh, children uh, parents and seeing the children teachers are concerned how the children are reacting so, and you will notice that even first standard kids are not able to sit for more than half an hour in their mm -hmm. work. They are diver di their attention gets diverted. So, that's where we feel there's a lot to work in. And you find that autism is on the rise. That's also creating another problem. So, so we, we better be aware of the symptoms and what is screen addiction and how it affects the children. And how we can take precautionary measures so that the, you can help the ch child on time. So the parents also don't go through too much trauma when they have to accept that situation. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think that's it's a very important point. that And kids love doing activities and they'll definitely enjoy learning these things. Very amazing. And how do you uh, teach? Like, um, if, if I may ask you, what is that uh, process or procedure that you normally follow for right. getting people into your thing? I teach online on Zoom and I start with uh, fun with alphabets, curves, shapes, numbers. So it is basically what they know, like how to create a tree uh, out of a letter A. So it is with, with they know, but they have to recognize the shape in the drawing. So when I draw the A in three different sizes or four different sizes and then connect it one below the other and then connect it to form a tree, it is something which they wouldn't have looked for. Mm -hmm. And children enjoy that. Because I teach in a totally different manner. I don't uh, teach the normal uh, conventional art way. So I, I help them through fun at the same time see that they get enough motor coordination. They have they're occupied with what they do wow that's amazing to know so uh maybe like for the people who wants to learn the art from uh selma very ma'am and also maybe the kids uh if you feel that uh, they can learn these arts especially the drawing and uh, in an easy and fun way with the numbers the lines and all that uh, I think um, I'll share the link of yours ma'am and the description so that people can reach you out and uh, yeah, any one last message for parents or uh, parents, parents, whoever parents, watching you? Yeah, it's uh, important to see that much importance is given to the child in the age group of one to seven. That's where they learn most of the things which will support them in life later on. Whatever they learn and pick up tangible, intangible messages, they, it is where we need to help them out. We need to give them the right guidance. It is this that stands for them throughout life. And when we are aware of certain things, pitfalls, we must correct it all the time. Well, now irritability in children is seen a lot because of mobile and screen addiction. And if we are not able to guide them in the right way, 
in a calm manner and we ourselves don't practice uh, that it becomes tough. We have to have a lot of uh, screen, uh, screen time at home and away from uh, eating area and all that so that you know, they're able to focus better. Amazing, amazing. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for this message and um, thank you for being here on this uh, podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much.